again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Alright, so this week spring has sprung. We are fast approaching Easter, and I thought it would be appropriate to do a telltale a sign of spring uh, with a robin's egg nest for today's tutorial. I'm going to be using my three standard brushes as per most classes. So I have my large square one inch wash brush, a medium sized pointed brush, and a smaller detail brush. I'm going to get those in my water cup off the side of the screen. The colors that I'm going to start with for today's tutorial, uh, for the background step, I just have a little bit of ultramarine blue, some burnt sienna type warm brown, a little bit of yellow, and some white. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. So I'm gonna be starting here with my largest square brush, and we're just gonna be doing a really fun background first. So this is sort of a little bit abstract, uh, a little bit stylized, and totally customizable too. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a light blue up in this right hand corner and this is sort of like the sky. Alright, so it's uh, sort of like we took a photo of this bird's nest from the top down and it sort of fuzzed out the backgrounds uh, with like a macro focus with a photograph. <laughs> That's thinking a lot into it though. Um, so like a little bit of like a fuzzy background and then We'll have our nest and eggs as sort of like the primary focus here. Okay, so I'm just bringing that blue through the corner here and into the middle a little bit. I'm gonna rinse my brush now a little bit. Oh, and if you'd like to see what brushes and paints and everything that I recommend, I do have a link to a description or a link to a materials page in the description box below. Check that out, I wanna mention that before I forget. <laughs> I'm gonna make a little bit of a light brown now with my burnt sienna warm brown and white. I'm gonna take this down here as if maybe it was ground or, you know, like a bunch of sticks and brush as well. That's part of the nest. Grabbing some white there too so that I'm not really blending the blue into the brown so much is in blending the brown into the white and then the blue into the white. You're gonna get kind of an interesting grayish color if you blend the blue and brown. That might not be your favorite. <laughs> I love like bright, happy colors. This is, today's painting is sort of a neutral tones painting, which is always a challenge for me. <laughs> I really like to do things very whimsically. My house is full of bright colors and folk art, and so is my wardrobe. Okay, bringing that up like so. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of green down here as well. To do that, I'm going to rinse my brush again and just blend a little bit of my yellow with this blue, very pretty green there. And just a little bit here at the bottom kind of suggesting some greenery in that tree or maybe some grass. And why not take that up here as well. Very pretty, soft, easy background. Let's see. And do a little bit more brown over here in this little white spot. Okay. A little bit of blending, but that's looking pretty good. I think I'm gonna go ahead and let this layer dry and we'll come back and add a whole bunch more. So I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. I have a dry background and fresh colors on my piece of palette paper. So once again, I have a fair amount of this burnt sienna type brown, some black and white, a little bit of phthalo green and some more ultramarine blue. I rinsed my brushes and got fresh water at break as well. Let's go ahead now and jump right back into it. Okay, so I'm gonna grab 
my smallest little detail brush. And really quick, before I really get into the nest part here of the painting, I'm gonna kind of block out where I want my nest to be. I'm gonna, gonna be using a little bit of light brown for this on my smallest brush here. I'm going to do a circle, make it a little bit lighter so everyone can see. That's gonna be about the center or so of my nest. It's gonna come out quite a bit. I want it to come off the sides here in a few different areas. Okay, now I'm gonna grab my medium-sized brush and I'm going to start building my nest. So I'm gonna start here with a little bit of dark brown, just in the center here. And I actually wanna start getting all of my brush strokes going around and around, just like so, all around that center point. Every brush stroke matters, even when it's just one solid color like this, you're gonna see the little brush stroke texture each time, all right? And we're going to bring this, what is the center of the nest, out about to that line that we just created for ourselves, like so. All the way around and then once we get to that beige line we're going to start lightening the color a little bit okay so this is the center part where our eggs are going to be a little bit further out there and then I'm going to add a little bit of white in for that next layer going out okay this is just the base colors right now. You can go ahead and blend that first color into your lighter color, just like so. Okay, so not being afraid to go into the color before so that you get a little bit of a blend here. So we're starting to look like, you know, the insides here of a nest. All right, and then just bringing that a little bit further out with that light brown, a little bit of extra white in there, just like so. This is gonna come out pretty far. Oops, a little bit too much black got pulled in there. But it's okay to play with all of these colors, really. So I'm gonna go in here with just a little bit of this kind of grayish brown that I've sort of made partially on accident. But I'm gonna go with the flow here because there's gonna be a lot of different shades of brown that we're going to need to add. All right, so we're almost getting that about the size here that we want it to be with this first layer. A little bit further out. Just like so, almost like a flower, all the way around, okay. All right, these colors looking good. Let's go ahead and grab our smallest brush now, this guy here. And I'm gonna go back into the center with a nice dark brown. Okay, so brown and black together. It's looking pretty good. And here we want to do the same kind of thing, but we're wanting to have thinner lines and have it start to look like branches. Okay, so that's what we're going for here is lots and lots of little branches woven delicately by these amazing birds. And it reminds me a lot of like building a wreath as well, and that everything is going around that same direction, pulling out from the center here with some shadows. We're going to go a little bit into this section as well, letting some of those lines be a little bit wiggly, a little bit natural. Just like so, playing around. 
with lots of different shades of these natural brown stick colors. Okay, going all the way out here and then there might be some branches kind of sticking out as well. Along the outside edge. It's a very mesmerizing painting, I think, because you get going round and round and round. I love to also throw pottery. And I remember my teacher talking about getting all of the molecules of clay going the same direction. And that's when you center a piece to get going, and then as you're throwing, you're going around that circular axis. There's just something about it that I find very calming. And the same goes for wreaths as well, really. All right, and just like so, it's starting to look pretty good. Little brush strokes with that small brush different sizes and shapes here. You can kind of start to blend some of these as well. Just keep going round and round until you feel that you've done enough brush strokes. I'm going to grab a little bit of a really light brown now. Just brown and white together and come in with a little bit of a highlight color on the outside. Just bringing this white mostly along the outside edge. I don't even need to use a light brown really for this because my white is kind of blending on contact, doing a little bit of wet on wet blending. Okay. And just highlighting some of those branches, just like so. I want to mention if you are painting along today, I have a Facebook group that's called The Art Club that is specifically designed for my students to share their work, whether it be from painting along with me or from your own studios and imaginations. I would love to have you join us over there. It's my favorite part of my week to see what everyone's up to over in The Art Club. There's a link below to check that out as well. All right, just going round and round, keeping at it here. Looking good. I wanna also mention I'm now offering two very cool Zoom opportunities. One is classes with yours truly, where I can take you every single step of the way through one of the paintings and you actually get one-on-one -on -one feedback and can ask questions. And that's a Zoom offering and then i also am going to be offering what i call art party academy which is teaching teachers how to teach these concepts or these concepts like these uh in a in a form of a traveling pop-up arts and crafts business so i am a very much an art entrepreneur i've always been a bit of a businesswoman. i've had a lot of success with bringing paintings and crafts into schools and retirement homes and wineries and all kinds of places, private homes. That's just a really, really fun way to make a good side income. So if you're interested in that, I'm gonna be offering that a couple times a year. And there's information below in the description box about that as well. Doesn't have to be painting really, it could be anything. I used to also teach wine glass painting and I went to a really cool uh, silk scarf dyeing workshop. So if you want to get creative, let me know. All right, this is looking pretty good. All right, I'm just going to now take my darkest shadow here, which is going to be almost black and get that here just in the center. Just like so. Making a nice little place for our little eggs. Beautiful bright blue eggs. 
All right, and just a little bit coming from the center out into the middle part here. Looks pretty good to me. All right, I think I need a few more sort of branches coming out here. I'm gonna fill up that whole space pretty well. I like it. I like how some areas look a little bit tangly. You can just imagine the work that that little bird had to put in, find all these branches. I love birds, they're very amazing. Okay. Oh, that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and let this layer dry for just a second because we really want to get bright light blue there in the center. So let's let this area dry and we'll come back in just a few and get everything finished up. Okay, and we're back with the final step, which is just going to be our eggs, of course, very important, kind of the focal point of the painting here, which is why I wanted to let this dry completely so we didn't pull any of those dark colors into our beautiful blue eggs. So I'm gonna be using my smallest brush and I cleaned it off very well, nice clean color here. And I'm actually going to go in just first with white by itself. And you can do as many little eggs here as you like. I'm going to do three. If you're doing this painting for a parent or you are a parent yourself, it might be fun to do as many eggs as children or siblings you have. Okay. Just like so. Yes, in fact, this would be a cute painting for Mother's Day as well. And I'm going to have them going slightly different directions here, just like so. And I'm always starting a little bit smaller than I think the eggs are going to end up. And I'm leaving a tiny bit of space in between them as well. And that egg shape we're, shape we're going to have just be slightly oblong. So it's going to be wider on one side, a little bit narrower on the other side. Perfect. Just getting it all filled in with white first. Giving it a little bit of a base coat. Lovely. And our final egg over here. All right. And before I bring that main color on, now that we have our eggs blocked out, I think for the next step, what I'm going to do is add a little bit of shadow. Okay, so we're gonna just let that white dry for just a minute. And then with black, a little bit toned down black. So this is gonna be the darkest color really that I have. I'm going to go around those eggs, adding a little bit of shadow just making sure that it's nice and dark right around each egg so that it's nice and cozy in the nest. Just like so, some shadows, and then you can pull the shadows sort of into the branches like so. Okay, good, good, just here and there, good, very cute, I think I'm going to take that black a little bit further out into sort of this mid-level here, just with a little bit darker of a shadow, I do like my dark shadows and my bright highlights. I am not someone that is afraid of contrast or of color <laughs> in general. All right. I feel like I've always had a free pass to be that way because I'm a redhead. <laughs> we get to be a little bit crazy. Let's go ahead and mix up our egg color now. And I'm going to start with white. I'm going to mix in a little bit of my blue. 
very nice for a nice vibrant blue. That's a gorgeous color, but I'm gonna sneak in some of my favorite phthalo green for a gorgeous teal color. Love that, so pretty. Okay, I'm gonna go right back over my eggs. It's okay if it blends a little bit with the white. Just like so. And then just fill in those egg shapes. Along the shape of the egg, every brush stroke matters. Okay, and now since that egg is circular or egg shaped, we're going to add a little bit of a highlight right here at the top or in the center part of the egg and blend that slightly into the blue. That's a little bit challenging, but that looks just about right. Perfect, nice and subtle. So you can see now how it's just a little bit lighter there in the center. Okay, I'm gonna mix up a little bit more of that base color, trying to match as best as I can, but I think eggs sort of change color a little bit, egg to egg as well, as well as shapes. Okay, and then just filling in my other two eggs in the same exact way. I can hear the birds calling outside of my window. How appropriate <laughs> for a lovely spring painting. Let me know in the comments section if it's spring where you are or if you're someone that is on the southern hemisphere because I know it's only spring for half of us. And I have a lot of people painting along that are from the Southern Hemisphere, such as Australia, South America as well, so. Greetings from across the globe, and that's another one of my favorite parts about this channel, is that I get to connect with students from all over the world. So cool. All right, little bit of highlight there in the center as well. Okay, blending it in ever so slightly. Nice and subtle. Okay, and the final egg here. Super cute. In just the same way. We have our nice little shadows around our eggs already. They look cozy. Going along the shape of the egg. And then just a little bit of highlight right in the center. Right down that center line. Very nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lovely. So final step here is going to be our beautiful speckles. And I really love this part. I think it really is the piece de la resistance here of our painting today. So I have a clean, small brush. And with white, I'm just going to go in very lightly and add little tiny speckles. Oops, a little bit too much water there. Here and there, just a little bit. I'm gonna do a little bit with white and I'm going to add a little bit of a darker color as well. Just like so, little tiny spots here and there, very subtle, but very meaningful. Okay, look at how pretty. Very light texture here with my brush, and this time I want sort of a natural speckle. I don't want a super circular shape. So in some classes, you'll see me use the end of the brush for a nice circular shape, but I'm using the slightly smooshed brush tip for this. Okay, looking good. 
and now a little bit of a darker color sort of like a dark bluish gray will do nicely perfect a little bit of water added a little bit more blue and a little bit of the light blue so I have a sort of steely gray a little bit of blue in it I'm going to add a couple of speckles of this second color as well. Very, very light texture, light pressure with the brush. And we're being pretty sparing with this step as well. It's just an accent. So just a little bit here and there. Okay, looking very pretty. All right, very nice. You can add any other final touches that you'd like to your painting, but that is all the instruction that we have for today's class. Let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to see you over in the Art Club Facebook group. Please check out my new Zoom offerings, both classes and Art Party Academy. And I also want to mention that you can now find a special section for Paint Along with Sky on the website Painting Tube, which is also a great resource for other intermediate and advanced level painting tutorials. So go ahead and check that out. All right, that is all I have for us this week. So until next time, stay creative.